Hey, I'm Rachel. And I'm Katie. We've noticed an alternative viewpoint in the marriage debate that's gaining some momentum, and so we wanted to address that today. The viewpoint is that marriage is none of the government's business. This viewpoint seems to be based largely on the idea that there is a third option, but it ends up agreeing with those who posit that there are such things as a right to gay marriage. Even though it gets to that conclusion more through an extremely minimalistic view of government than through an expansion in the name of love people. But even if they mean well, this policy would be a disaster on our system. Dr. Jennifer Robeck Morse, in an article entitled Privatizing Marriage is Impossible, it's important to note that Dr. Morse is actually a self-professed libertarian, stated that, quote, disputes that arise between contracting parties in a marriage must be resolved by some overarching legal authority. Let's face it, that overarching legal authority always will be some agency of the government. Having the government have a say in marriage is not a bad second option, rather ensures that the family has its own rights and privileges. The family is the basic unit of society. As Robert P. George, former president of the National Organization for Marriage and Princeton professor put it, the family is the, quote, first and best department of health, education, and welfare, end quote. Without being able to recognize that most basic unit, the government would be forced to reach further into the lives of individuals because they wouldn't recognize the legitimacy of family identity and authority. A good example is no-fault divorce. If you aren't familiar with this concept, no-fault divorce is a legal procedure available in every state. It allows a person to be divorced for any reason or no reason whatsoever. Jennifer Robeck Morse explains that, quote, no-fault divorce was supposed to increase personal freedom. But the result of this legal change has been state involvement in the minutiae of family life, as it resolves disputes over custody, visitation, and child support." End quote. In the case of no-fault divorce, the government's attempts to get, its out, get itself out of one aspect of marriage uh, only gave them more power to intrude into the details of family life. Then, of course, there is adoption. The ideal situation is for a child to be put into a stable family with a mother and father. The government is the only entity can, that can make sure that this happens in every case of adoption. It is entirely unfair to allow a child to be adopted by a couple that can't give them what they need. We can't allow children to be adopted by gay couples. We cannot put children at a disadvantage simply because of who they're adopted by. A lot of this comes down to the fact that there is a lot of pressure to support gay marriage. What is a person of conscience supposed to do? The answer is simple. We need to be willing to do what is right for families and keep marriage governmentally defined as the union between a man and a woman, even when it means being unpopular. We're including some links below for you to learn more. Please like and share so that people can learn more about this important issue. Also, thanks to Never Ends Music for letting us use their song. Thanks, thanks for watching! watching.